This webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today. Afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here doing the intro for Warren Peacock. So the, the remit for this afternoon's webcast was really a, a live backtesting um, of, a, of, of a trade system. I, I've given Warren a, a 721 trading system that I used to trade back in uh, 2006, day trading uh, Aussie futures. Uh, someone, and I, I can't remember who, said to me, hey, let's try this one. Let's have a look-see. Um, then the point is, and Warren will go through it, and if you've got systems that you want to test, if you've got time, we can toss those. And it's less about this particular system necessarily. It's more just around the the, the concept of it because you know, test back testing is an important component. But with that, Warren, over to you. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Simon. Uh, hi, everyone. All right, so Simon gave me this uh, 721 simple moving average crossover system. I've done no backtesting on it at all. This will be the first time I'm looking at it. Uh, just to give you an idea, once you can backtest something, you can go to any instrument. So once you understand how backtesting works, you can then adjust it, adapt it to your own style, but you can go backtest any market in the world uh, and therefore trade anything on a really good understanding of what the system is capable of. The, the one caveat, of course, is backtesting is based on closing prices. Uh, and when you trade, you're going to be slightly different to your backtesting numbers. The idea would be you can outperform a strategy. You can outperform a straight line system. Okay, so I'm going to just backtest the system and then give some input as to how it would be possible to trade it, if at all possible. Uh, so if it's a net profitable system, one could actually go and trade it. Uh, let's just get started with the, the basics. The idea is that if the seven simple moving average crosses above a 21 simple moving average, you're going to go long on the next candle closing higher. So it's not on the crossover, it would be if the next candle closes higher. Uh, I'm just going to start on the right hand side of the chart. We have a moving average crossover. Uh, we have a big red candle. So the idea would be that if the next candle closes higher, we can enter the trade. Uh, let's just make this full screen. Okay, uh, we are on the right hand side here. That green candle has closed higher than the close of the red candle. So essentially we're going long on that candle. And right, so we enter open of the next candle, which is over there. The stop loss is one of two things. The candle closes below the seven simple moving average. In this example here, we would have closed out at a 50 point loss or you can use the 21, this will be a personal preference and probably related back to your uh, risk management and capital allocated. Uh, I'm not going to really work on an account size here, we'll just see what the system tells us at the end of the day. So if we had closed out, it would be a loss of around 50 points, uh, so that would be a stop loss on the long side, minus 50. If we were using the 21, we're still in the trade. Market breaks higher, and we can see a little bit of sideways coming through. If we go crossover to crossover, we lost 50 points. So in this example, the first 50 would have been the better stop loss. We had a maximum potential of 160 points. Now this is a 15-minute chart, okay? So your time frame will make a difference. If you uh, you guys can go and back test this on a five-minute chart, I'm not doing that. I'm hoping to get enough time to do it on the hourly and maybe even the daily. So what we had here is if we had not taken a stop loss and we had used the 21 as a stop loss area, the maximum we could have made on this trade is 160 points. Uh, and that's perfect, okay? So we'll just take the open of the next candle and I'm going to write down a profit of 123. And that just goes on the same line. So if we had taken the stop loss minus 50, if we had taken the maximum 123 profits. Uh, remember but to back test, we just want to know if the system does work, what would be the best way to profit from it? Uh, that's the goal. If we had waited for the crossover to the opposite direction or if we had used the 21, we would have still lost the same 50 points. Uh, so I'm not really going to write that down. On the short side, we now have a cross to the short side. The next candle must close lower. It didn't. It closes higher. And uh, in my box, you probably wouldn't have traded that. Uh, that candle caused the crossover there. The next candle closed higher. The third candle is the one that closed lower. 
and we would have just left it alone. We get a crossover, and again, the system doesn't confirm the signal, so we get a buy signal there. Next candle closes lower, no trade. Okay, so that's one trade and two no trades, and off the market goes. Right, so we get a cross down now. Part of your back testing can also be crossover to crossover. So if you if you do the back test, you'd have to do both. One based on the candle closing higher or not, and one based simply on the crossover on the open of the next candle. We go long, uh, and a cross down. We would close out would have given a 30 point profit with the maximum of 250. But I'm going to stick to the system for now, and say so we have that candle causing the cross down. The next candle closes lower, so we would enter the trade on the open of the next candle, which is up there. And uh, we just move forward a little bit in time. Okay, that would have been a great trade. So crossover occurs there, open of the next candle is there, and we have a trade, and it's still going actually. Right there it closes. Now we've made a reasonable profit. Uh, let's just go and measure it. We say from that open down to this price crossing up there, it's 365 point profit, and you close the trade. So we have one stop loss at minus 50. If we'd kept the trade, we made 123 points to the, the long side. Uh, that would be the maximum. Uh, let's just make a note that that would be maximum. Uh, if we had taken the first trade and stopped out, we would have lost 50 points. This trade had no stop, continued lower, eventually closed above the seven, and we had a 365 point profit. Okay, no trade. Crossover occurred on that candle, and the next candle closed much lower. So there would be no trade. The cross down, that candle caused the crossover. The next candle closed lower. The open of the third candle would have been the entry point, and we would have been stopped out. So it would have been short over there, stop loss on a close above, so somewhere in this candle, uh, minus 65 points. So the short gave us a profit of 365, and it now has a loss of 65. Rightio. And we wait for the next signal. All right, we get a long trade over there. It's right at the end of the day. We're not going to trade that. Okay, we don't trade in the last hour of the day on a moving average crossover system because uh, this is what happens. We end up with a gap the next day and it bombs us out. Right, so we have another trade there. That candle causes the crossover. We end up going short right at the bottom. Now, we have to take note of this and say there must be a cutoff that if the crossover occurs and the next candle goes too far, I'm not going to make a trade. So in this example, the crossover occurs down there. From the top to the crossover is minus 270 points. So you'd have to decide whether that is too big or not uh, to keep you out of the trade. But we've got the benefit of hindsight here. So let's just make the trade based on the system. We go short over there. And we would have been stopped out over here for minus 65 points again. And we're still in net profit. And, and then we wait. Crossover occurs. Get a bit of space. Uh, that candle causes the crossover. Mm, next candle closed red. No trade. We get a short over there. Next candle closed green. No trade. Crossover occurs over here. Next candle closes down. Uh, now, I'm assuming that this would be based on the previous candle's high, so it didn't close higher. Uh, it's closed lower. No trade. Short, same thing occurs. No trade. Uh, and what this is doing, really, by, by not trading, keeps you out of the noise of the market. Now, we look at this, and, and most traders say, oh, you know, if I'd bought down here and sold over there, it would have been 300 points. Uh, the reality is you have to have a trading system, and that system should be back-tested, and then you've got to stick to the rules if that system works. Uh, so here we have the crossover up. We buy on the open of that candle. We get stopped out minus 40 points on the long, and 
we get a short signal. Uh, that candle didn't quite close lower. I think personally I would have been quite happy to trade the next red candle. Uh, it did close above the 21, so we would have been stopped out at minus 39. Uh, let's just make it 40 for our numbers. And the market continued lower. So again, crossover to crossover, or using the 21 would have given me a different result. Now, one of the important things to note here is it breaks support. So crossover comes, oops, get rid of that. Crossover comes through, you take the trade, closes above the, the 7 over here, doesn't hit the 21, and we'd have to just keep a separate record of the 21 as a stop loss. So there it didn't close, here it closes above the 21, would have made a 405 profit uh, on the short, 405 based on a 21 SMA stop. Okay, so we differentiate, we can do two or three different types of exits as we do in the process. All right, so we can work out at the end of the day which one gives me the best return. Is the 21 going to work better than the 8? Uh, sorry, better than the 7 over time? Or is the 7 going to make me shorter term profits and I'm in and out of the market quickly? Okay, we get a long trade. Uh, that's a bit difficult to understand because the price hasn't really gone up. But again, it looks like the price closed lower there, closed higher. Next candle closed lower, it's at resistance. Uh, personally, I don't think we would have taken that trade and the system doesn't seem to really take note. But if you had taken it, uh, you would have had a stop loss of minus 167. So I'm going to put that in under the long side, minus 167. And then we had some nice whiplash over here. Didn't really cross down long enough. Uh, crossed up over there. Next candle didn't confirm. Crosses down. Uh, we have a low here. Uh, didn't really close lower again. So no trade, big gap. We don't trade the gaps. If you get a big gap like this, it's normally better just to leave it alone and wait for the next signal. And so we go on. So here we have a short. It uh, doesn't really confirm, and again, there's a breakaway gap going through here. Uh, no trade. And it did close higher, so it wasn't confirmed. Take a long from there. If we had used the 7, we would have exited at around 70, 80 points. So that would be, let's take it 70 points. And if we had based it on the 21, we would have lost a bit more than that. Uh, okay, let's go. So there we would have. Uh, what am I doing? Sorry, there we would have made a profit. Sorry, would have made a profit of seventy. And if we use the twenty-one, we made a profit of break-even. So that would have been uh, zero. <clears throat> Go short doesn't confirm. Goes long again. End of day. Uh, if you'd held it overnight, sure it would have been a profit. We can't back test that. Crosses down, didn't close lower, crosses up, uh, crosses up again late in the evening, early morning, market opens, no trading going on there. Uh, we take a short here, it confirms, 48 point profit on the short, if we'd used the 7. If we'd used the 21, it would have been at the end of the day, so we would have just closed out somewhere at the end of the day. Uh, we can just use a price here and say, okay, fine, we would have made 150 points by the close of day. All right, that gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's 13 trades. All right, so number of trades is 13. Uh, profitable trades, we've got 123 and 70 on the longs. <clears throat> and then the shorts gave us 360 and 400. So that's 770 points on the shorts. 770 profit, uh, 193 on the longs. Uh, on the losses side, the longs gave us minus 50, minus 40, minus 160. Uh, so we have minus 250, minus 260 points. Uh, so that would be loss, minus 260 for the longs. And on the shorts, we've got 65 and 65 and 40. Uh, so it's 130, 170 minus on the shorts. Right. 
So the net totals, if we take 193 points profit plus 770, 193 plus 770 equals 963 points profit. We just make it 960. And on the losses, we've got 260 plus 170. <clears throat> Sorry, let's just try that again. Uh, 260 plus 170 equals 430 loss minus 960 profit equals 530 points net profit. Okay, so we had 13 trades. We had one, two, three, four, five, six losing trades. Six losing, one, two, three, four, five, six winners. So we have a 50-50 hit rate. And remember we had those trades using the 21 as a stop loss. Over this data set, that was the better way to exit. Uh, obviously this can change over time and as you gain experience you'll learn when not to trade and when to trade based on chart formations other than moving average crossovers. But just for backtesting purposes we have a 50-50 hit rate and the 21 was a better stop loss and that was based on the short. So uh, it gave us some really good results there, a 365 point profit and a 405 profit. Uh, da, 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 okay, so we've got a hit rate 50-50, number of trades is 13. And sorry, the risk reward ratio is roughly, okay, let's just work it out. Uh, risk reward ratio is 960 plus 430. 1390. So the risk reward ratio is about 1 to 1 1.8. Okay, so for every for every point that you lost, you made 1.8 points. So just under two. So a risk reward of one to two, which is not bad for a, a 15 minute chart. Uh, your trade expectancy, you would take the 530 and you divide it into the 13 trades. So 530 divided by 13 trades. Oops, 530 divided by 13. Your trade expectancy is 52 points per trade. So every time you push the button, you're expecting a 52 point profit. Okay, that was over a very small data set. It's only 13 trades. You want about 30. Uh, once you've got 30, you've got a, a valid um, analysis tool. Ideally, at the end of the day, you're going to work up to 100 trades. Uh, from that, you'll have a really good statistical probability of the system. Now, that was just the first part. Uh, we've worked out that every time we trade, we can make 52 points if we use the 21 as a stop loss. Okay, that's the basic premise. Let's go and have a look at the hourly chart now. Okay, let's just go hourly. And I've again just chosen some arbitrary time in the past. Uh, and that is not in the deep past, uh, that's just the current contract. All right, so let's just start with a bit of volatility. <clears throat> the same idea remains. The crossover occurs, next candle didn't close below that candle, so there's no trade on the short side. The long happens, uh, moving average crossover there. Green candle closed higher than the close of the red candle, so we would enter the trade somewhere in the next candle. And it's an hourly chart, so you do expect to hold this overnight. Uh, if we go and use the 7, we would have stopped out the very next day for 500 point profit. So that's 500 points, and that is based on the 7 EMA. If we had used the 21, we would have a potentially different scenario. Ah, look at that, 630 points roughly. So that's an extra 130 on this trade, so we make it 630 for the 21. The short comes through, next candle closes down, we take the trade. If we had used the 7, we would be out at a negative 250, so minus 250. If we had used the 21, we would have been minus 60. 
and then we're looking for the long. Uh, long occurs there, that candle sort of at the low. Again, end of day by the time the next hourly candle finishes, so there's no trade. Uh, short happens next day. It follows through. Again, we've got a big move, 1,380 points. Uh, you'd have to decide whether that is worth it or not. And that would probably be based on your backtest results. So again, if we had used the 7, we're minus 300. If we'd used the 21, we're minus 600. So we just make a note, 300 and 600, and that's minus. By now, you're starting to get a little irritated with the system. Uh, you've had two losses in a row, one of them quite large. Um, the long comes in, uh, end of day again. That short happens and the candle starts to move higher, crosses over again the next morning. It's not a very big gap. Take the trade. If you had used the eight, uh, sorry, the seven here, we would have had 320 points. So let's just make it 320 on the seven, positive 320. Uh, if you had used the 21, would have had a stop loss over here somewhere. Uh, so you would have made about a thousand points. Hopefully you're getting the the basic idea. Uh, here's a short again. It follows through. Big gap. Closes above both of them. Minus 160. Uh, so minus 160. You go long because the next candle closed higher. No, wait, sorry. There, there we go. Next candle closed higher. You take the open. If you use the 7, you made 260. And if you use the 21, it would have been a couple of, uh, a couple of days later. It uh, closed below the 21, 520 points profit. All right, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 trades so far. Uh, crosses down while the price is going up. Uh, Normally speaking, you, you wouldn't be trading that. Uh, it crosses up again over here. Price closes, starts moving lower. Uh, there's no real trade. There we go. Moving average crosses down. The price is breaking the moving averages. If you had taken that trade and stopped out, you would have made a profit of 30 points. If you'd used the 21, you would have had a 90 point loss. So minus 90 and minus 30. Moving average crossover doesn't confirm the trade. Crosses down, sort of confirms the trade, doesn't follow through, crosses up, confirms the trade, and you can go and back test the rest of it. Let's work with the numbers that we have here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six trades based on the seven EMA. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades on the 21. Uh, okay, so the seven would have given us 500. Uh, 500 profit, minus 250, minus 300, plus 320, plus 260, minus 30. So it would have been a net profit of 212 points. And using the 21 EMA would have given us 630 profit, uh, minus a 60 point loss, minus a 600 point loss, plus 1,000 profit, uh, minus 160 loss, plus 520, minus last trade of loss of 90. Oops, I've just done something wrong, so I have to just work it out again. 630, minus 660, uh, plus 1,000, minus 160, plus 520 minus 90. 1,240 points profit. Okay, so the 21 is certainly the one we're going to watch. Uh, the 7 EMA gave us a 200 point profit. The 21 gave us 1,240 points profit uh, based over those six or seven trades. Your hit rate, uh, we've got one, two, three trades right. And then we've got one, two, three, 
four trades wrong. So the hit rate is less than 50-50, it's about 40%. Uh, so the hit rate is around 40%. And our risk reward ratio is a lot better because we have uh, 760, 820, 820, 910 loss. And we've got a 1,600, 1,000, 2,150 point profit, thereabouts. All right, so the risk reward ratio is again better than one to two. It's better than one to two. The length of time that we would have been in the trades is a lot longer than it was in the 15 minute chart. We have a pretty good idea that the hourly chart is actually a much more uh, profitable as far as number of trades goes and the number of points. The downside, of course, is that the hourly chart has a much higher stop loss. Uh, it had a loss of 600 points. Yeah, uh, Your 15-minute chart, the biggest loss there, negative, was somewhere around 65. 167 points lost was the biggest loss on a 15-minute chart. So it's going to come down to your capital as to whether you trade it on the hourly or you trade it on a 15-minute chart. Uh, I hope this is giving you a pretty decent idea of how to play some, uh, how to do some back testing. Uh, the other thing to take note of is volatility. I see we don't have enough time to look at the daily, but you're welcome to go and do that. Um, if we look at an hourly chart and we just measure the price distance away from a moving average, uh, we can see that 700 points away from the 21, that green candle, 770 points away, roughly. You can actually work out an average. Uh, profit take for a second contract. So you could enter two contracts on the crossover on the system and if the price gets away from the moving averages uh, that that number of points, I'd probably work on about 400 points. Uh, as soon as the candles get 400 points away from the average you're going to close one of them off. Uh, and then you can use other technical tools to exit trades to tighten up on the stop. So you can outperform the system but the backtesting gives you the idea that this system is worth pursuing. Uh, so please go and backtest it. Take your own strategies, put it on the instruments you trade, backtest it in some detail. Get your hit rate, get your risk reward ratio, calculate your trade expectancy per trade. All right, uh, thank you guys. If there's any questions, please just pop them through. Uh, and you're welcome to send me some of your, your backtesting results if you want to, and I'll have a look at them. Uh, you know how to get hold of me, Warren at thetradersplace.co.za. Thanks, Thanks Warren. Simon. Yeah, a couple. <clears throat> excuse me, a couple were coming through, but we're hitting time. Uh, there were a few questions around the system that we went as as the presentation was going through. I took those on the fly as they happened. Um, folks, take Warren up on his on his offer if you if you want to send him through some stuff. The process, as he shows it, I mean, there's no rocket science. It's just a case of going and doing it, and then I suppose go and. Uh, 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 use uh, 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 apply it accordingly. Stefan's asking, why don't you use Velocity's Olgo Studio for backtesting? Most, or not most, <laughs> a lot of the software stuff I've got, you can go and code your backtesting. Warren, why are, you, why are you doing it manually with a pen and pencil? Man, because in the backtesting, really, either you've got to be a really good programmer to go and program uh, closing prices, or you can only go average crossover to average crossover. And the other thing is, by doing it on the computer, you don't actually learn to read a chart. Yeah, and my problem was, yes, that's I, had, I also then had to rely on my programming skills, which was um, even some of the really simple programming skills, uh, the, the sort of, you know, uh, what do they call them? The, the plug and plays, what you see is what you get. Yeah. I managed to break them. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there. We're hitting the time. Warren, as always, really appreciate it. Thank you. Ladies and gents, appreciate your time. Cheers, all. This webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today.